It's time to analyze the reaction yield, which is a very interesting concept. It's not similar to selectivity, but it's kind of like, let's say they are like husbands. They have something to do, but they are not exactly in the same like family or so. And we're going to see that as with selectivity, maybe based either in rate of reactions, which will be the instantaneous, or overall flow rates, which is the overall one. And well, we're going to see that. It's better to analyze it fast ASAP. Instantaneous yield is essentially here. I don't want to give you the whole definition. It's yield is the ratio of the desired product rate of reaction, which is this. That's okay, that's exactly the same we've seen before. But now we're going to compare it with the rate or versus the rate of reaction of our base. And I say base because remember that we always use and we try to use the limiting reactant or the one, for example, if all data is based on A, the constant is based on A and the concentrations are already based on A, well, let's use that rate of reaction of species A. And the only thing here that changes is that this is a rate of reaction and this is a rate of production because D is, of course, a product. And A is, of course, a reactant. So maybe you are already getting the idea that we're comparing how much moles are we producing of product or of our desired product versus the reactant, which will be very cool because we will see if we have low yields will mean that the reactant is actually reacting, but it's not giving us our desired product, which will be very, very bad because it means that you are producing the undesired product, which is a worse thing because you already waste that reactant. So A went to the undesired uh, product and that's very bad. Now, I told you before, we will have also overall yield, very similar to overall selectivity. We actually use the same symbol here. And we are going to talk about more into flow versus flow in the case of continuous tank or continuous flow reactors and mole versus mole when we talk about batch. So before just giving you, yes, we use also base species letter A, we have this. The moles that react or are formed, actually the moles that are produced of our desired product versus this here. And probably you, well at least if you remember, this has something to do with conversion. So yes, it's something like that. We're going to see how, as conversion passes by, how our desired product increases, decreases, or how is it, uh, how is it interacting with the uh, reaction. So if you have low yields, low overall yields, that will be actually very, very bad because that means you already waste this and you don't have this. So what do you need to do next? Well, you will need to feed more to produce this final because normally you have a general amount that you need to produce certain amount per time so either you have low selectivity or overall selectivity you will need to increase this difference which is not that good because means that you have a bad conversion and this conver well actually you have the conversion but you are not converting into the desired product so that's very awesome we can actually relate our product versus our reactant and one final note, I just want to tell you a little bit on selectivity and yield. The selectivity, I, don't, I, I will not do the exercise, but you will find out that the instantaneous selectivity equals the overall selectivity. And that's also the case for the yield. Now we will be using yield or selectivity when we talk about money. So if you want to do a presentation, do the overall yield or the overall selectivity because that's more, let's say, measurable, it's easier to get, you're talking about kilograms per unit, time, and etc. It's easier to, if you start speaking about the rate of reaction, how many moles react in per unit volume, per unit time, they will not get the idea, especially if you're talking about money and you want to present that project. But if you are actually with some engineer or some persons, you need and you want to improve the process, the design, the, uh, the rearrangement of reactors, type of reactors, etc. You need to talk about instantaneous yields. 
and instantaneous selectivity. So it depends on what you're talking. Probably you're going to talk with your like chief boss or about money, that you need that money because you've done this analysis. So you do this analysis and do the rate analysis and you see, yeah, if I increase or I change these reactors, I will get better yield or selectivity. Then you go and say how many flow rates you're going to use, uh, how much money is going to be generated on that new idea. So hopefully you get the concept and if not, don't worry, we are not going to do these presentations. It's just to understand why are we using overall versus instantaneous. And once again, guys, we need to understand that selectivity and yield or yield has almost nothing to do with conversion. If you have a good conversion, doesn't mean that you have good selectivity or good yield. And backwards, if you have a good selectivity and a good yield, you may have a very, very low conversion. Actually, we're going to study that love-hate relationship. Uh, yeah, the higher the conversion, that means X, the higher the transform reactant, yeah, that's true. That's totally true. You are reacting. If X increases, uh, your reacting, which is probably A, is going to decrease, which may be either good or bad, because if you're producing a reaction that you don't want, that will be extremely bad because you're losing material. And if you're producing to the desired product, that will be awesome. And yeah, that's the analysis we're going to do later. Just keep in mind that uh, as conversion passes by, doesn't mean that selectivity or yield are going to increase. And this is a, a very important note. I actually made it only one whole slide for it. Conversion is based on the fed reactant. So this is based on reactant. And the thing is that yield and selectivity are based on products. So that's why we cannot talk about or we cannot compare it directly. And yeah, that's section number one. It was only theory, selectivity, type of reactions, multiple reactions, yield. Now we are going to actually start with the analysis of parallel reactions. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.